Hello once again, I have got something super cool to show you guys today. This was one of the three vintage typewriters I found at uh, two different thrift stores while I was thrift shopping with my girlfriend the other weekend. This is a Xerox 6010 memory writer. It's an electronic typewriter from around 1985. And this is just a super cool electronic typewriter and I am so excited to show you guys in today's video. Starting right off, of course it came with this plastic cover you can see. It's got one rip right there but otherwise it's, it's in pretty good shape. And uh, it's got the big Xerox logo there. I love the old Xerox logo. I was sad when they changed to the logo they use now. The cover just pulls right off. And there is the machine itself. For an electronic typewriter, of course the only other one I've reviewed in a video is my Smith Corona CXL 4200, I think it's called, or 4500 or something like that. This is way bigger and beefier and a little bit fancier than my Smith Corona. This is a really cool device. It's got this back that flips up with this little extension that you can raise if you want. That's just for the paper to lean up against so it ain't falling over behind the unit. The Xerox Memory Writer series uh, competed with first with the IBM Selectrics, the later IBM Selectric electric typewriters, and then later the IBM Wheel Writer series of electronic typewriters. And V Westlife has a good video of an IBM Wheel Writer if you want to see what one of those looks like. But this competed with those typewriters. This particular model would have complete, competed with the later Wheel Writer series. And uh, it is a business class electronic typewriter. This was designed not for use by individuals, but in offices, in businesses, for secretaries or anybody that needed to do typesetting. That's what this was aimed for. Um, this costs round about $800, $900, maybe $1,000 um, back at the time. The Xerox Memory Writer series was introduced, I think, in 1981. There were two generations. The first generation, which ran from 1981 until 1985 or 86. And then this is part of the second generation, which was a bit sleeker, a bit slimmer, that uh, ran from around 1985 until, I'm not sure when, 1987, 88 maybe. But uh, the 6010 is the most basic model of the second generation Memory Writers. Fancier ones had an electronic uh, display, an LCD display, and that that could be used to type whatever you want into the display and then check it for any errors and make any corrections or modifications you want before actually printing it onto the paper. So that's very cool. And in fact, the first generation memory writers, the fancier models of those had not an LCD display, but a VFD display, a vacuum fluorescent display for that purpose, which is just really cool. Fancier memory writers also had a floppy disk drive for storage of whatever you were writing. This one doesn't have that. Uh, fancier models also had uh, a computer connectivity. You could hook them up to a computer to use as a daisy wheel printer. Again, this one doesn't have that. This was the most basic model. But uh, this memory writer, the 6010, does have some pretty neat functionality and I'm going to demonstrate that to you in today's video. Doing a physical overview, of course I've already shown you the back plane here. This little thing slides over. You can use that to set where you want the, uh, the left edge of your paper to begin. I just leave it on zero there. Um, you've got the knobs to turn the platen. Now being a electronic typewriter, this obviously has motorized platen advancement. But you do have the manual knobs if you want to go old school. You've got this little lever here to release the paper so that you can pull it straight out or when you're putting a piece of paper in. And then this lever retracts the paper bale. This cover here flips up. There you can see the print head, daisy wheel. This big cover lifts up as a whole. So from there you can change the ribbons, um, change the daisy wheel, you can change out the daisy wheel for one of a different font if you want. 
And interestingly, there's this metal, this metal plate inside here that has the serial number on it with the Xerox logo. That's kind of neat that they put that there and that it's a nice thick metal plate instead of just a sticker or something. This has some pretty nice, this, you know, this was a pretty fancy typewriter. It's pretty nice. Um, this foam here that dampens the cover from any vibrations, that's starting to break down a little bit. But that's no big matter. The rubber parts, though, are in very good shape. The rubber is not degrading. It's nice and pliable. It's very good. I haven't oiled, I haven't greased up this bar that the, uh, that the carriage rides on yet. I should do that at some point. It's still got the old grease on it, which has turned kind of brown and yucky. But uh, this thing is working perfect. And actually, you remember in the video I made showing the, all the typewriters and the other stuff I got, um, that this thing wasn't working very well. Um, I explained that it was randomly beeping. It would just sit here and it was doing random erratic beeping and it wouldn't respond to key presses. But after Bridget and I played around with it more, it just started working properly. So I'm thinking maybe there were stale capacitors that uh, just needed a, a bit of time to reform themselves. Um, or maybe it was something totally different, I don't know, but the important thing is this thing seems to be working just perfectly now, which is awesome. Makes me very happy. So that's what's under the cover. And what's kind of cool is, you can see there's the character scale um, printed on the cover here. You get scales for whatever print wheel you're using, 10, 12, or 15 characters per inch. Very nice. Unlike my Smith Corona, where you can um, change between 10 and 12 characters per inch, this thing, I believe it's based on the pin, the what what uh, daisy wheel you use, what print wheel you use. Because um, the print wheel that's in there now is Courier 10. So I think if you wanted something for 12 or 15 characters per inch, you would have to buy the appropriate uh, daisy wheel for that. But I might be wrong. See, the thing is, I have not been I've been I bet I have not been able to find a manual for this thing or any memory writer. I looked for manuals on any Xerox memory writer um, to get, gain some insight on this thing's features, and there's just none. There's no manual online. The closest thing I can find is someone is selling a manual for a Xerox 6020 memory writer on eBay. Yeah, I've been totally unable to find a manual for this thing, which really sucks. If anybody has either a manual or your own personal knowledge of some of the features of the Xerox 6010 memory writer, please let me know. Um, I would like to know if there is a way to change the characters per inch without changing the daisy wheel. Also, I don't know how to use the macro feat. One of the fancier features of this typewriter is you can store macros in a key, and then when you hit that key, it types the whole macro, whatever you stored in that key. I have no idea how to use that. I haven't been able to find information online. I don't know how to use that feature, so if you know, please tell me. But, uh, uh, and the only other feature I'm not sure of is this save sets. I don't know if that has to do with the macro or something else. I don't know. I, I just don't know what it does. I haven't been able to figure it out. Um, this dash up here, when I, when I, uh, when I hit the function key and, and hit this key, it just, it literally just writes a dash. I don't know if there's supposed to be something else there or what. Um, and then this express, I have no idea what this does. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate those features, but I can demonstrate the rest of them. I have been able to figure most of this thing out, which is good. Changing out the consumables is easy in this typewriter. To change out the ribbon, there's a little tab here, pull back on that, the back comes up first, and then lift up the front. And there you've got your ribbon. This is, this is obviously a typewriter that can correct what you've typed. It can pull letters right off the page like my Smith Corona does. So rather than a fabric ink soaked ribbon, it has this uh, plastic tape that's coated with a special, uh, a special pigmented material. But you can see it's kind of interesting. The ribbon is a little bit wider than what you see in most typewriter ribbons. And it shifts the ribbon up every other letter that you type. So 
Um, it makes use of the extra wide ribbon because it types one letter and then it shifts up and then it types the other and then it shifts up and it goes up and down, up and down to make use of that extra width. So you get a really long lasting ribbon. It's a big ribbon cassette. This is the biggest ribbon cassette I've ever seen on, uh, on a typewriter. And as you can see, it's quite a ways used. No, this is what's left. So there's that, there's quite a bit left, <laughs> the opposite. So that's, that's excellent, that's good. So I, I'll probably never have to change this out. Which is good because some retailers that sell replacement ribbon cassettes for this particular typewriter, they're freaking expensive. You know, other typewriters, you can get a new ribbon cassette from a retailer for like five, ten bucks. I've seen people selling these ribbon cassettes for a hundred dollars. I am not kidding. Although luckily, they you can see them on eBay too for just a few bucks. It's, it's not a rare type of ribbon. All the Xerox memory writers, or at least the second generation memory writers, use the same ribbon. So it's, it's, it's easy to find one of these. There's a serial number, starts with 5, so that might be 1985. Not sure. There it says, Memory Writer 60 Series, XCD Ribbon. So that's how you take the ribbon out. To take the correction tape out, the correction tape is actually two separate pieces. You just, you push down on it and move it to the left a bit, and it comes out. This part comes out, and then... This is the opposite. Push down, move it to the right to get it past the bracket. And it lifts out. And there your correction tape lifts right out. Putting it back in is a bit trickier and I can't do it with one hand. I've got you between my legs. This is about the best view you're going to get. But putting the correction ribbon back in. Make sure there's no twist, twist in the ribbon. There we go. Uh, put one in. Oh, get it in the right place. And it just clips in. Feed the tape around in front of the daisy wheel. Past all the guides. And then... Oh, the other one goes into place and snaps in like that. There. And then to uh, so that's the trickiest consumable to change. To get the daisy wheel out super easy, you pull this tab back and it unlocks. And the daisy wheel pulls, whoops, pulls right out. And you can see the font is Courier 10, a very common, very common font. You can drop it in, the orientation doesn't matter, it'll orient itself. Just drop it in, and, or I should say, make sure it's facing the right way. The label faces faces towards you, but the, uh, the rotation orientation of the wheel doesn't matter. And then push the thing back, and when I turn this thing on again, it'll automatically orient the print wheel. Put the ribbon cassette back in. Uh, well, I've got the uh, correction tape in the way now because I pulled the correction tape lever up. So actually, I'm going to turn this thing on. There we go. You can see it oriented the uh, daisy wheel and then it brought the carriage here down. So now I can get the ribbon cassette into place. Put it front first, behind all the guides. And... Make sure the back clicks into place, and we should be good to go. Might have to type a few letters uh, before the print becomes clear because I've disturbed the ribbon. But after that, it'll be good to go. I forgot to mention something about this guide here. Um, what's really cool is that if I lift it up here, there's a green LED uh, behind at the back of the carriage here, and that shines through this scale. So you can see, without having to look over here, you can see exactly where the carriage is. That LED serves as a marker for where you are. And that's excellent for, you know, if you have to move the carriage, like backspace to a, to a particular character, you can see exactly where the carriage is. And that's just super awesome. Here's a profile shot of the 6010 memory writer. 
quite a large machine. And there's the back end. You got the Xerox logo tastefully placed. And uh, you got this tiny little molded information plate right here. 115 volt, 60 hertz, 4 amps. Quite a lot of current. And the power cord, it's a standard IEC cable, just like a computer. So this just pulls out. And you can see it's a standard IEC cable. That's very nice. So there's an overview of the Xerox 6010 memory writer. Now let's let it speak for itself. So I'll turn it on here. I don't know if I mentioned the power switch is right here. Turn it on. And uh, it uh, does a self-test, resets the carriage. And you can see what I mean. That's very, very cool. If I hit the space bar here, you can see exactly where the carriage is. It's very, very cool. I haven't mentioned the uh, keyboard. It's it's a rubber dome keyboard, which is going to be far inferior to an IBM Wheel Writer. The IBM Wheel Writers had a buckling spring keyboard. Um, but as far as rubber dome keyboards, it's very nice. It's a very pleasant keyboard. It's nice to type on. Way better than my Smith Corona with its absolutely tactless uh, spongy keyboard. This is way better in comparison. It's a nice rubber dome keyboard. Um, let me put a sheet of paper in. So I've got a sheet of paper. I'll just stick it right here. Pull this back so I can shove the page in. It's in there pretty good. And this thing is a really cool feature. When you pull back the paper bale, it'll automatically advance the paper until it's at the carriage. That's pretty cool. And there we go. And uh, we can just start typing. Now what's really interesting about this thing is that the uh, the print action is very quiet. This is the quietest typewriter I've ever used. It's it's super quiet. Like, let me type here. It's really nice and quiet. It's not very loud at all. It's really, really nice. Hit return. And, uh, yeah, you can just type with this thing. Um, let me put you between my legs again. Just do a quick little typing test. That didn't come out right. And that beep means that when it beeps, it means we're five characters away from the right margin. And uh, it's time to hit return when we can. So we'll take a look at this here. And you can see the print, letter quality print, really, really nice. So in addition to, to the usual letters and numbers and punctuation, there are some special characters that this typewriter can type. First of all, this isn't really a special character, but notice uh, the shift six here. Instead of the caret, which is on a normal keyboard, it's actually got a cent sign. So I can write, oh, 99 cents. And uh, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, but other special characters, um, actually it's kind of weird, the comma and period, the shift is just also a comma and also a period, um, which I guess makes sense because um, when, you, when you turn on caps lock by pressing this key, it is a true caps lock for all the keys. So on a computer keyboard, when you turn on the caps lock, it'll it'll shift the letters permanently, but it won't shift the numbers or the punctuation. But on this it does. Like with caps lock on, if I press the numbers here, we don't get numbers. We get the shifted symbols. And uh, to turn caps lock off, like a normal mechanical typewriter, you don't hit it again. You have to hit shift and it turns off. So that's kind of interesting. So that's why the comma and period uh, are replicated for the shift so that when you turn caps lock on, you can still get the comma and the period as you need them. Um, other special characters, these green characters here, 
you actually get by holding one of the green function keys on either side of the keyboard. They do the same thing, either one. Hold it down, press the key, and uh, we get registered trademark. Um, hold this and shift and press the same key. We get the mu symbol. Um, we get this little character which I usually associate with um, Microsoft Word when you turn on the feature that shows you all the hidden formatting, which is a very useful feature. The carriage return is denoted by this symbol, so that's kind of interesting. I don't know what it's supposed to mean in real life. Um, the 3 and 2 here, that's squared and cubed, so that's very cool. I showed you on the, um, the Smith Corona uh, video it had a feature where you could do um, superscripts and subscripts. This, as far as I know, doesn't have that, but uh, it has the cubed and squared right there, so that's kind of cool. And you can manually turn the carriage to do that anyway. Like if I wanted to do a subscript, a subscript uh, X2 or whatever, I write X and then move the page up one tick, and uh, I do there, X2. Oop. Uh, well, this is a chance to use the correction feature. So this key right here does the correction feature. And you can see how that works. And that's how that works. Very cool. So yeah, that's the correction feature. And of course, in order for the correction feature to work properly, it has to know what letter it's correcting. So, it's not called a memory writer for nothing, even though this is a basic version that doesn't let you type into memory before it prints onto paper. It still has memory for everything that you've, that you, for, for an entire line of writing. So, so I can type an entire line here and I can press the correction key and it uh, does the last letter, do it again and it remembers, but I can hit the backspace, backspace key and go back to any letter and then hit correction and it corrects that letter and it, re re and it remembers the entire line's worth so that's very very cool. You can do a manual um, correction too so like once I do a carriage return uh, oh it goes to the end there because we were doing a correction so pressing return once um, takes it back to where you were before you started the correction which is a nice feature. Hit return again start a new line and uh, what's kind of neat is, I can, once you start a new line, it forgets the previous line. But I can still go back and do a correction if I want to, so, ah, uh, that's better. So, let's say I want to go back to the previous line, or actually, I'll, I'll go two lines up and delete that sent symbol. So, what I can do is, this index key, index, and then it's got a function reverse index, index advances the page and reverse index brings it back. So if I do a reverse index and bring the carriage to where that sent symbol was right there I think that's the right place. No, I gotta go back one. There we go. So now it's over the sent symbol and I, I press the function key and go manual erase and now it's waiting for me to do a manual eraser erasure rather now I'm going to hit the send symbol, so shift 6, and it got rid of the send symbol. So you can correct anything regardless of if the typewriter has, uh, has whatever you want to correct still stored in memory. You can go back and do a completely manual correction. That's a really cool function. Really, really cool. Very, very, um, very powerful function. So you can go back way earlier in the document and correct something even then. You don't have to start the document all over. So very, very nice. Other functions this has, it does have auto return. Now to activate this, you hold down the function key. And so, so there's a few functions up here. And to activate any of these functions, you hold down the function key and press whatever key on the top row is under those functions. So 
Um, to activate auto return, I hit function key and hit the uh, plus minus symbol, and the little light turns on. And it's kind of nice, kind of neat. This thing has a plus minus symbol and a degree symbol as part of the available characters. But auto return is on now, which means when we get close to the margin, the next time you hit um, the space bar, it'll automatically begin a new line. So I'll just do a bunch of type in here. And it's beeped now. So once you're at the margin and it beeps, the next time you hit the space bar, it does a carriage return and automatically advances the page. So very good. So that's auto return. This does have a center feature, um, a function that I was really impressed by on the Smith Corona. Well, this has it too. It turns out most electronic typewriters have that. So to do the center function, we hit function and then center and it brings the carriage to the middle of the page and I can start typing something that I want to appear in the center of the page and you can see as I type letters the carriage moves left and it doesn't actually print a letter and now when I hit enter it prints it out and it's perfectly in the center of the page very very cool function Something this has that my Smith Corona doesn't have, it has underline and bold, so I'll do bold first. In the Smith Corona video, I showed how you can make bold letters by basically typing a letter, backspacing, typing it again a few times over and over, and you can get bold that way. Well, this thing does the same thing, but automatically. So now with bold activated, you can see it punches the letter twice. And if I turn bold off and type the same thing again, you can see that it is indeed bolded. Now what's kind of neat is, let me type it bold again, oops. When it does a correction, it accounts for the fact that the letter is bolded, and it, and it does the correction twice just to make extra sure that the print is going to be pulled off the page. So if I do a correction, you can see it does it does it twice. Very, very cool. Now I'm kind of wondering if I do a manual, I do, if I do a manual erase, so let me backspace here and I'll do a reverse index. Oops. Uh, oh, why won't it let me do a reverse index? There we go. And I back. Oh, that's interesting. I just learned something. Um, I guess for maybe memory related reasons, you can't do a reverse index unless you're at the end of the line. And once you do an index, um, backspace actually brings it back up. So I guess that's a way for it to, you know, to make sure that you can get back to exactly where you are at the end of the document if you start navigating to earlier in the document. Um, all right, well, I'll cheat and just turn the uh, turn the platen here, and we're at the bold B, and uh, I can do a manual erase, and I'll hit capital B, and I'll do it again. Oh, nope, that, that wasn't intuitive. Uh, backspace, manual erase. So it does it once and then it automatically goes back to normal operation. And manual erase. There you go. I'll do the same for the O. Manual erase, cap or lowercase O. And then manual erase, lowercase O. So you can do a, uh, a manual erase for bolded letters. Now, I can do underline too, so function underline, and I, I talked about in the Smith Corona video how you can do an underline by typing letters, then going back and typing underscores. That's the actual purpose of the underscore character, is to do underlining uh, on typewritten documents. But with the underline feature enabled, the Xerox Memory Writer does it automatically. So I start typing, get a focus, and then start typing. And you can see it, it prints twice. It prints the letter and then it prints an underscore. And that's very cool. 
And you can do underline and bold simultaneously, which is fun because it takes quite a while to print characters. <laughs> and then to to do a a um to do a correction on a, a character that's bold and uh, underlined, it has to do it four times. So it does it twice for the letter and then twice again for the bold underlining. Because underline it does bold as well, I think. Yeah, I, hear, I heard it punch four times, so... Oop. Now I'm wondering if you can do a manual erase on a bold and or underlined character. Like if I backspace... And I hit manual erase. And underline and bold are still activated, so I wonder if it'll account for that. Yes, it does. So you can do a manual erase on a bold and or underlined character. That's very smart. That's very, very nice. So to turn bold and underline off, I'm just going to hit the keys again. You can do a half backspace. So if I do a space here and hit function, half backspace, you can see there are two half backspaces to a normal backspace. So if I really wanted to squish letters together, I could type a letter, do a half backspace, type the next letter, and keep doing that. Well, that actually doesn't work very well. Oh, I, I guess it sort of does. It's a little bit legible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a half backspace if you wanted to do that. That's pretty much all the features. Well, that actually, that's not all the features. There's one more um, printing feature that I can show, and it's an auto indentation. So auto indentation is basically a way to do an indent, like if you if you wanted to indent an entire paragraph and you wouldn't have you you wouldn't have to set a tab and hit tab for each line of that paragraph, I can set an auto indentation. So um, a sort of use case where you would do this if you're writing uh, if you're writing a book or, or a document or something and you want to have a long quote, at least um, in school I was taught if you if you want to quote something and the quote's quite long, sh uh, do an indentation for the entire quote and it just makes it look better. So if I'm typing something and I want to type a quote and I want it to be like 10 characters over, well, I'll advance the, car the uh, carriage 10 characters over and then I'm going to hit auto indentation and now everything I type will um, be indented each line, so just write some stuff here and you can see it automatically indents the next line very nice. To cancel the auto indentation uh, on the return key there's a function end indentation and the carriage goes back to its normal position when you do that. Going to the uh, function keys at the far left here, oh, well I accidentally hit it already, but you can change the line spacing between one, one and a half, and two lines. So if I set it to two and hit return, or I'll type a letter here and hit return, you can see it advanced two lines, so that's simple enough. You can set your margins here, so let me bring the carriage back, and uh, uh, you can set where your left margin uh, where you want that, so I have it for this eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. I have my margin set at ten and seventy five so there 's uh one inch one inch margins on each side and uh if I want to change the margin to something else, I just move the carriage to where I want the margin to be, and I hit left margin and that key's a key doesn 't type very well. you have to press it quite hard but uh now. My left margin is at 20. What margin release does is it um, it temporarily. Let me test this just to make sure. Yes. So margin release you can activate at any time, no matter where the carriage is, and it just temporarily gets rid of the margin. So you can see now, 
I can bring the carriage all the way to zero. Of course, it's easy enough to set a write margin, just turn auto return off. And I can put the carriage as far to the right as I want and hit right margin. Now the right margin is set. Turn auto return on. So let me put the margins back where I want them. So I gotta go margin release. So the margin release is only applicable to the left margin. So I want that on 10, left margin. And, oops. I want the right margin at 75, right margin. Tabs are easy enough to use, so by default, the only tab set is at the right margin. So I hit tab and it goes to the right margin. Um, but to set a tab, let's say I want a tab at 20. I hit set tab and now there's a tab at 20. See that? And if I hit tab once I'm at the right margin, it'll just go to the end. So a convenient way to get the carriage to the very end. So to clear a tab, you got to be at that tab and just hit clear tab and that tab is gone now. And then this DEC tab, deck tab, I'm not sure what the deck means but I found out what it's for. It's a tab that you can set whereby at that tab you can do centered text. So let's say I was writing a document and at the 30 point was where I wanted centered text, like if I was writing a if I was writing like a column or something. So I could bring the carriage to 30 and hit function deck tab. So now whenever I hit tab and I get to this margin, the special entry light comes on. Special entry means if you type while this is lit, it's not gonna just type onto the onto the page, it's gonna do something special. But And what's happened is the deck tab is activated. So now when I type stuff, it's doing a center, and when I hit return, it wrote that centered text. And uh, yeah, whenever I want to get to that point to write a uh, to write a centered uh, some centered text, I just hit tab, tap to that place. The special entry light comes on, and uh, when I hit the space bar just to normally go to that point, the special entry won't light up so that you can type normal text. Um, but whenever you want to do a center at that special tab, you can just tap to it. You can see, hit tab, special entry comes on. So that's very cool. Um, I think I can delete that tab just by going clear tab. Yes. So that's tabs and margins. And that's pretty much all the functionality to demonstrate of the Xerox Model 6010 Memory Writer, or at least all the functionality that I've figured out how to use. Unfortunately, there's functions that I don't know how to use. Um, there's the aforementioned macro storage um, feature that I know this typewriter has, but I have no clue how to use it. Um, and then there's like this save sets, which might be part of the, uh, of the macro setting. Um, these end and stop keys, which might also be part of it. And then there's this blank key, but to be fair, I don't. I think this blank key is not meant for anything. When I got this typewriter, I couldn't press this key, and I thought the key was stuck, and I also thought this key being stuck might have been what was causing it to beep randomly. So I pulled the key off, and what I found underneath was a C-clip. So I think that C-clip was was deliberately put there to stop this from being pressed because this key doesn't do anything. Um, I lost the C, C clip, it's somewhere in Bridget's apartment. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, no matter, the key just presses now even though it's not meant to and doesn't do anything. But again, if anybody has more knowledge of these than me and can tell me any functionality that I've um, missed in this video, I would greatly appreciate it because I haven't been able to find a manual for this. Poking around, there's one more function that um, I've been able to find and uh, um, just accidentally, if you hit function shift three, 
um, it, uh, it goes through a self-test and it prints every character on the daisy wheel and it'll print the entire length of the carriage so hopefully I can I think I can hit the stop key to stop it from going off and printing onto the platen. And I hit stop. Oh, and return won't work. Do I have to hit stop again? Oh, okay, you hit end and it stops. Yeah, so I have to hit stop and then I hit end. Oh, I thought. Maybe it just takes a minute to, uh... There we go. Yeah, it just automatically does it by itself, but... You can see it prints every character on the uh, daisy wheel. Also, it says version 1.3. That must be a firmware version of some sort. But yeah, there you go. Um, I've also found if I hit function, shift, stop, it just resets it. So it does like a, a reboot, as if you turned it off and on again. It doesn't seem to have erased any settings. My margins are still there. Actually, my margins... Oh, maybe my margins aren't there anymore. Ah, so it does actually reset it, because my margin was at 75, now it's at 70. Okay. Uh, so if I do that, right margin. If I turn it off and on again, will it remember my custom margin? Yes, it does, but if I were to reset it, it resets itself to 70 for the right margin. Well, there you go. That is all there is to show of the Xerox Model 6010 Memory Writer from around 1985. What a really cool business-grade uh, electronic typewriter. Really, really neat. Um, is it as heavy built or as interesting as an IBM wheel writer? Probably not, but in its own right, it is a really cool device. It feels very high quality. It sounds very high quality. The typing is just so quiet compared to most typewriters. It's just really nice. The keyboard feels nice for a rubber dome keyboard. It's very, very cool. Um, so I, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed making it. I know it's it's been a long time, like a month or a month and a half, since I've made a normal YouTube video. My life literally went topsy-turvy after I met Bridget. In a good way. Topsy-turvy in a good way. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I kind of strayed away from making videos for quite a while. But um, I haven't lost the want to do that. I love making these videos. I'll always, I'll always love that. Um, so, more videos like this to come in the future, hopefully. So, just uh, bear with me. Please be patient on that part. My life's in a really good place. So, that's it. And now, lesbians on typewriters. That means it's time to hit return when it beeps. There you go. Because I don't have auto return set. Oh. Do you want auto return? Sure. So hit the green function key and then hit the key that's... So to either side of the space bar, hold that down and then hit the key that's right by the auto return light. Yeah. There you go. Luckily the camera can't see whatever you're typing. I can't see what you're typing yet, so it'll be a nice surprise. We're just typing silly. You like it? Yes. Is it fun? It is. <laughs>
It's something about it just makes it... It's super satisfying. Yeah! It's, ah, uh, that makes me want to, like, write a book on something like this. Right? I wish I, I wish I had the gall to keep up a diary. I'd do it on one of these. How do I make it? What if you're done? How do you make the whole thing spit out? Uh, this? Oh! Oop, kind of scrunched up there, but... 